Hello everybody, welcome to this week's Dissecting Design. We are taking a look back at Age of Empires 2. This is going to be the HD edition that was released a few years ago as a way of bringing the series back. Now, for those of you who are fans of Game Wisdom, you know we've done previous Dissecting Designs on both StarCraft and Rise of Nations. So we're kind of going through, I guess, the RTS history here. But... The 90s were really the heyday for the RTS genre. And during that period, basically three core franchises came out to kind of dominate. You, of course, have Command and Conquer with asymmetrical and, of course, the very uh, B-movie style cutscenes or FMVs. And, of course, more Tim Curry is always needed there. You had StarCraft and WarCraft that went fully asymmetrical and complete fantasy, dealing with more individual units and armies rather than tanks and military vehicles. And then you have Age of Empires. The, I would say it's probably the more grounded of the RTSs that came out during that time, and of course developed by Ensemble Studios, and being their breakout game and what they're most famous for. Although, I do know people who enjoyed Halo Wars. I actually had a chance to speak to one of the lead designers on the game, Sandy Pearson, a few months ago, I think back in 2017, but we didn't really get too much into Age of Empires then. But, if you've never played Age of Empires, this one, of course, is based more on our history rather than alternate histories of Command & Conquer and science fiction. And it does a lot of things differently. And... It's definitely the slowest of the real-time strategy games. Rise of Nations, despite having pulls from the turn-based genre, specifically uh, Grand Strategy or Forex like Civilization, was still a little bit faster. And of course, going back to a game that's over 20 years old at this point, it's going to be interesting. But, I'm going to start things up on a single player map, we'll talk about the basic gameplay, and then move on to what they did differently after that. And, one last thing, if you're expecting pro-level RTS play while I'm trying to discuss game design, you're not going to see it here. And there's a very good chance that the AI is going to kick my butt, probably in the first 10 minutes. But, let's get into game now. Alright, welcome to the game. It's paused right now. But, the general play of Age of Empires 2, as with any real-time strategy, is to defeat your opponent. I got things paused because things are going to move very quickly once we get in. Right now I'm playing as the Britons, which is the uh, older version of Britain here. And the rules, what makes Age of Empires 2 a lot more interesting is that there is a greater emphasis on resource management and allocation compared to both Command Conquer and StarCraft. If you look at the upper left, you'll notice that we have four main resources as opposed to usually the standard of one or two during the time. Each resource requires its own building and respective upgrades. So I'm going to unpause and we're going to try and talk about this and play at the same time. Alright, oh, we got turkeys, how nice. The idea of the challenge of Age of Empires is that your villagers are it. You need them to construct and handle all the major aspects of playing the game. Including building houses to support our population, getting military, and so on and so forth. We start with a scout cavalry unit. Now the thing about Age of Empires is that there is a heavy emphasis on unit uh, balance and unit strengths and weaknesses. There is a pseudo rock paper systems formula here. Usually it's archers beats melee, melee beats cavalry, cavalry beats archers. However, even with that said, anyone who's played Age of Empires knows that there are units that can break those rules. They're busy doing that. We have more population coming in. Right now I'm trying to scout around to find my major resource sites, including food, wood, not more turkeys. Turkeys is still considered food. 
But I need to find gold and stone. And also, I should always be vil building villagers, as anyone who's played Age of Empires knows. Alright, there's stone, thankfully. But I need gold. Each resource is used for specific tasks. Wood is normally used for building construction and upgrades. Food is for units and upgrades. Gold is for more the expensive or researches. And stone is for siege and building many of the defensive and offensive structures that we'll have access to. Now, we need to rush food because I need to get to the next age, which will allow me to start building some powerful infantry. Alright, so they're good. Got a little bit of wood coming in. Deer. Come on, where's that gold? He is ahead of me right now, which is not good. Correctus. I'm going to get things going here by building a mill. Ooh, that way I can immediately gather that. And yeah, there is a lot of microwing, too. Put my troops in a defense. Alright, that's done. We need more homes. Come on, bring me that food. But there's gold like right behind me. Alright, the mill is done. Ah, I was right. There's our gold. Alright, that's done. So we need to quickly send them over here and start gathering. You should normally have about 12, I think. 4, 8, 9, yeah, we're not even close yet. Yay. We still know where our enemy is. Oh, there's another supply of gold down there. Now, aging up is the main form of keeping things going in Age of Empires 2. Each age adds in new researches, buildings, and military. Stone. Gather her. Gather her. All right. We really need more food. Oh, a relic. We will need to get that when the time comes. We're kind of keeping neck and neck with the AI, thankfully. Come on, people. Basically, aging up right now to get out of the Dark Ages is a very big deal. Come on. We need a lot more than that. I don't think we're going to be playing a full game because Age of Empires is a lot slower pace than StarCraft II in that regard. And these matches can take a while, especially with the AI and how the different unit counters work. This is a game where structures really do mean structures. They're not just going to go away very quickly. Uh oh, he knows where I'm at now. He knows where we live. Now that unit's not going to be strong enough to attack. Do we have anyone on standby? He should be around here, given the constraints of the map. I'm going to take one of these sides off of wood, put it to food. Alright, wait, I see a house. That's a good sign. We're almost there. Alright. All right. He went straight for farms. Farms are replenishable, but they're the slowest form of gathering food. Oh, and we just hit, so quickly I need to age up. He hasn't built any military yet, which is good. 
but we do not need gold in the first age. Alright, they're going to tech up. I think we're neck and neck. He may finish a little bit before me, but I should be good. Mandato. I think it's time to get some wood, or oh, I'm sorry, Golden. get a farm going. Yay. I'm gonna take one of them off and put them back to wood. Wood and food are gonna be your primary for right now. You don't need a ton of stone? Okay, so... Ooh. They can actually kill that unit too. Right, so they're spreading out. Now, I cannot build any more villagers while we're teching. But the second that's done, we'll be doing it. Right, I know where he's at. There we go, we aged up. That means we can now begin the process of growing. Uh oh, what's happening here? Oh no! Go away. <laughs> we'll move her over there. Get some better axes. And yet, yeah, now we need to start getting the farms. Because we are going to need a ton of food. Is scaling us around. Research is done. I need more wood, but I'm also going to start getting some gold going because gold will be used. Oh, wait, we need more. Ready. These guys are just hanging around there. Come on. Yay. Chopper. I need. You're gonna find you're gonna be needing resources like in different waves. Okay, that makes them hard to kill. We don't really need that right now. He may be going for an early strategy here. People speed it up. Same one hanging out here. Need another house. Let's see how he's doing. We are still very weak in terms of our military offerings, obviously. But the military again works on a rock paper system. System, wow, rock paper scissors system. That wasn't easy to get out. Uh oh, he just advanced, and it looks like he is investing heavily in wood. Uh oh, he's got barracks going. That's not good. So he is definitely going for some strong military pushes. We may have to do the same here. Fulden. Again, always get those villagers out. Fulden. Ready. All right, we're good there. Yay. Should probably start building some gold, Yay. or again gold coming in. We will need, I believe, for the tech up. Let's see. Yeah. We'll need wood and stone for that. We can improve our units there. Uh, we won't be needing a dock, thankfully. Alright, the barracks is done. Now. I really need to build archery because as the Britons, that's where my advantage comes in. Let's get more of those. Come on, I need 
10 more. There we go. They need food and wood. Food and gold. Let's get more of that. They're busy getting us some gold. Where is my cavalry? Is he down here? Uh, I'm a little nervous. We don't know what the AI is doing. There he is. I'm gonna put him out here. Let's get that. All right, that's done. Thankfully, these are bonus for his archers. These are just bonus against them. And we got some spearmen as well. Spearmen count cavalry, which are the natural enemies of the archers. Let's get Ready. that. D. D. Wait, what happened? I heard noise. Don't know where that came from. Oh, we found some more turkeys. Farms are starting to run out. Fortunately, I built the house just in time. We have bonus stronger archers, which are nice. Do I have enough to tech up yet? No, I need one more building. Gotta, be, gotta keep track of all the warning noises in this game. Build the blacksmith next. Bitch. Anyone off right now? There's that. Should probably upgrade for that now. Alright, that's gonna help our people move faster. Uh oh. You can also set this up to just auto spawn. Let's see if I get a scout. There, he's going heavy into stables. That's why I need a spearman to counter them. Uh oh. I doing? Ready. Golden. They're building that. Alright. I'm gonna start sending them down here. See if we get some aggression going. Try and throw him off. Should have enough for could build that. I still need to build the blacksmith in order to age up. I don't know what his army is going to be like, which is scaring me. Come on, you workers. Get f work faster. Enough to age up to. Let's see what happens. Again, they are weak against attacking buildings. Get him. But the 
Spearmen are strong against knights. Meanwhile, we are aging up as we speak. This should keep them distracted while we're busy. They're going to head into the... Probably to the barracks. Or to the town center to defend. But again, when the units attack their counters... Oh, they're now in there, so we want to back up. But when they attack their counters, they do massive damage. And you always kill villagers. I think it's probably time to build a forward base. Yeah, he's not stopping me. Now we have counters going. I think I will build a defensive tower, though, just to be on the safe side. Watch my back. Alright. We are moving on up here. That'll help out my archers. I can also age or rank up my archers now. Get him. I can tell you those knights are not cheap. Alright, so they've become upgrades, so now they look a little bit fancier. We'll get some more wood, because we're going to need it for all the archers that I'm building. That tech is done. I'll get that for them. But you really cannot attack an enemy and destroy them until we get siege. Right, I'm gonna get some stone. Stone, stone, there you are. Let's get another one of you. That. Some more archers going. He's probably going to go heavy into cavalry. But we need more houses. So. Yeah, he's on. One guy is not stopping me. And we're doing pretty good. Olden. Olden. He's building those houses for us. Or homes, I should say. That's another house done. Our tech is coming in as well. Mm -mm. That's done. So that will be our defense. I'm going to send her down here. Get us some more. So we need 650 for the good stuff. Get squires for sure. And you can see just how much more intensive this is in terms of what our options are. I should build a monastery, possibly. Let's see, what are we needing right now? Always use some more food. Yay. Yes. Got that. D. We now move a lot faster. Let's see. We'll build a few of those. And once we hit the magic number of 650, that's when we, we go for the castle. Oh wait, we don't need you doing that. Need more food. 
Again, you always need food. I'm gonna try and perform a hit and hit and run on his base. That should be enough. Got our pikemen. That's coming in. Should be able to upgrade, right? Don't think we need that. And it's too expensive, I think. And again, we're, we need more homes. Now, to age up again, it's going to cost a lot. But you got to be careful about knowing when to push. Alright, let's see. Get him. Don't want to fight the knights with our scouts. That's what the pikemen are used for. I'll tell them to stand their ground. Now, I am not good at migraine at all. <laughs> Trying to keep them focus. my exact counter? I think he has. But I would think the spearmen would do more work against them. The knights are just really heavy. Oh, it barely touched him. Mm -mm. Still need more stone, though. Probably even makes sense to build a second one. But, again, this is a lot slower pace. Uh, it's going to take him a while to tear that down without having siege. Which gives me at least a small advantage. We may have upset the uh, sleeping bear or something like that. It's going to cost a lot to build a second barracks. We almost got enough stone. He's probably doing uh, unit upgrades too. Let's get that. But we'll probably move on, I think, and talk a little bit more about what makes this game a lot more complicated compared to other strategy games next. Let's see, we'll build another barracks down here. And see if we can actually turn this around. I would like to at least get to the stone and get a castle going to show that off. Put everybody down here. Always need more wood. Oh, we're almost there. I just need less than 50. These upgrades are coming along. Hmm, I can actually begin to tech up possibly soon. I'm sure my friend is watching me right now shaking his head how bad I'm doing. And the eye in this game is no slouch. With the HD version they have upgraded it. Come on, just need... There we go. Hold him. 
now we have some fun. The fortress is your heaviest armor building in the game, and it's where you'll get the special researches that are unique to your specific civilization. Let's see, he's going. I should probably build that monastery. War is very expensive, as you can see. But once it is done, I'll also be able to build my special unit as well. And again, I'm forgetting the rule. Always be building villagers. There should just be like a one standard hotkey for real-time strategy games that just lets you automatically build villagers. Let's see. Hear more villagers. You gotta recognize all those sounds. This improves. Eh. Let's see, how much does this cost us? Golden. The monastery for that. Golden. Hurry up. Golden. I can just Golden. sense that he's coming to get me. things up a little bit here. At this point, we really don't need all that much stone. Alright, the monastery is done. I can gather that relic. And then once this is finished, we'll move on to our next section. Because again, these games can get lengthy. If you haven't already guessed. One of the big things I want are siege units. And siege is when things get even more expensive. Let's get that. It's done. Now we can build our special units and our special tech. The longbowmen are exclusive to the Britons. Britons? I think I'm butchering that. And we could age up to four. Uh oh. Where's that? There it is. I want to take that back at some more gold. He's trying to scout us out. Bo, what kind of person would I be if I didn't show you what these things do? Let's get a small battalion of them. And we should be able to build. We have the monastery. Let me show you what the university does. And this will give us free gold. Hit him. And yeah, these super upgrades are not cheap. And that's the point. That's done. have our army ready. And again, we want to build more defense, we can do that as well. Take them out. But if I was going for a real fight, we would probably get siege going as well. Got enough for that. This is done. Get improved ballistas. Upgrade our walls, towers, all that great stuff. Now our guys can actually attack melee a lot better. Mandaten. 
And then, like I said, one of the other points about this is that siege units or anti-building units are a very big deal due to how the balance works. But I'm going to push on out. And we shall see what happens. I'm actually going to get the yield, man. Oh, wait. Oh, it's wood, not food. He probably has a much bigger army than me, though. Or than I. Yeah. All these archers are not cheap. Not to mention all the farms I have going aren't cheap either. Well, let's see what happens, folks. Again, as you can see, when the counters work, they work. Uh-oh, we got flanking. back to our tower for defense. Get here. Actually, I can think of one better. The fortress has the highest defense. And the highest offense, I should say. And yeah, they're not taking down the fortress, I can tell you that much. I don't care how many knights they throw, the fortress will win. Because they have no siege. Double scorpion. There we go. And we've also knocked out a lot of his army. And look at that range on that fortress, too. Yeah, like, this would be the time to go in. Oh, my farms keep getting exhausted. Then we'll tech up. And again, siege weapons are very, very, very slow. But when they get there, they will wreck. Just about everything. You only a villager? Why are you in our little army? You're not stopping that. Just trying to lure him back over here. He's got a lot of standing army here. I should also bring the monk over, because he heals. Where's my monk? Monk, there you are. The monks can heal and convert. There we go. Again, the fortress kills all. Barry rings are not good on infantry units, if you haven't guessed. But yeah, these longbowmen will rip them apart. Oh, we're all out of stone here. And that's another major point, trying to recover resources. But we're about to age up. 
giving us a pretty big advantage. There he is. He's going to heal them. Yeah, he's not killing that. <laughs> now we can upgrade our bowmen to their highest class. And trebuchets are essentially your super siege. Goodbye. And again, it's just very interesting. Watch how things push and pull here. So right now I'm building a trebuchet, and that is the ultimate siege unit. Why well, it's also stupidly expensive as well. And all these farms are also why it's costing us a lot. I need more wood. Alright. And as you can see, our pikemen have been upgraded. They look a lot fancier now. I'm actually going to build a scout tower. Nothing too fancy. But we're going to do some sniping. Because who doesn't like sniping? I know I do. Alright, and then, again, before I just... I'm just, like, really entranced by this game, because it is a very elegant title. But, it's time. It is time to snipe. Oh, no, you don't. We got counters now. And not only are they counters, they're higher quality, they're aged up. Rock, paper, scissors, don't you fail me. Yay. Victory. The only problem with trebuchets is they take a very long time to unpack. But once they get there, say goodnight. He's about to learn the, me the messy rule of rock, paper, scissors. And that is don't build my counter, or don't build my uh, strength here. Yeah. Boom. Again, I don't know where that villager came from in my army, but we'll just send him into combat, right? He's fine. I think we got this one in the bag. I'm playing this on, I think, not moderate, the one below it. I'm gonna unpack him. Just move our trebuchet right into the middle of the action. And then just let him do what he does best. Yeah, but it's nice, I can actually show off a win in RTS. Go me. I'm trying to get... there they are. Uh-oh, back it up. That's what we want to kill, that's his best defensive structure right now. Valid, he can't do anything. Everybody go on defense. 
<laughs> There's also bombardiers that some of the factions get, but once that town hall falls, he will probably retreat, or he'll uh, turn it in. Oh, good, and a second one because two is better than one, right? But again, notice how the rock, paper, scissors is working. Because he wanted to focus heavily on cavalry to counter my archers, I built pikemen in order to counter them. And then, with all these buildings in place, we need specific units designed to attack buildings. And that's what the trebuchets and the battering rams are for. And again, always making sure that we got money coming in. But at this point, outside of the AI somehow getting 8,000 resources and like infinite building construction, I think we got this one. He's lost his town hall. He's lost a lot of his units. And we are still upgrading as well. We'll move them right into the center, and then let them go to work. Oh look, there's a second town hall. Shall we destroy that one, folks? I think we shall. Oh. And we found a second base, too. But again, always making sure not to forget. And now we've upgraded to Elite Bowman. Oh, she's trying to fish. How nice. And again, this is what this faction is good at. Using archers. And we'll talk more about that push and pull. In our next section. But I'm going to move them over here and let our army of badasses finish this up. Come on, you go over there. At this point, he's going to run out of villagers and he's going to run out of units. Let's see. No, you don't. A villager is not going to be a longbow. Archers are not good against buildings, as you can see. But if you notice, his value is going down quite nicely. He's trying to get some archers out to try and counter, but I think it's too late for him. And he's going to eventually not have enough resources to keep building. Oh, I'm actually out of gold. We need more gold. I've spent so much. <laughs> I did not think I was going to win this one, folks, so... I figured let's take it to the end. But as we're going through this, the monks can actually convert buildings if you upgrade them. Alright, that's done. And he is just losing value by the second here. And again, you can see how much this guy has built. And the AI, again, is no slouch when it comes to that. Give me that gold. We need it. There's not much left to actually fight with it. And at this point, I'm just trying to scope around see what's left. Because he should have given up by now. Unless he really thinks these remaining buildings are going to do the job. It's even our villagers in on the fun. Look how slow it's taking for our pikemen. And then watch the damage that this does. There's his monastery. And we could actually upgrade and give him building conversion. Where is it? It 
It's a very special one, I believe. Uh-oh. Oh no, it's just wild animals. We don't care about those. Alright, that's done. I'm also keeping track of watching him build. Because if his numbers are going up, it means there must still be something going on here. But, I think at this point, you can see just how much the rock, paper, scissors does work in this. In fact, I can actually do one other thing. Now that the game is over, I use my spies to reveal literally everything that's on the map. What do you think you're doing, boat? Where's my army here? Yeah, he's got nothing really left. Unless he thinks a port is gonna stop me. Or monastery. He has no more villagers, which means he can't build anymore. He is. I think the AI is thinking he can make a amazing comeback, but I can see literally everything on the map now. This is the last building. You would think the AI would be smart enough to get out. There we go, he is given up. Nice. How long was that? Jeez. That was just one camp, one map. And it took a quite a bit. Now imagine 2 on 2 and other games. But, now that we have certainly shown off just the nuances of playing Age of Empires, and again, I am not a high quality player at this. I want to talk about what this game does differently in terms of unit design and the flow of the game compared to the other contemporary RTSs at the time. Alright, now that we finished that very lengthy show of the gameplay, I want to talk a little bit more again about the differentiation. When it came to the other RTSs at the time, again Command Conquer and StarCraft, they both went with asymmetrical design, as in the Brotherhood of Nine were completely different from the GDI, Terrans different from Zergs, you get the picture. Each features its own internal balance, and then the balance of the factions themselves against each other. So the Terran Space Marine obviously acts differently than the Zerg Zergling, or the Protoss Zealot. And this is a way of making sure that how one faction behaved against the other was different. And that made things very popular in terms of that, you know, Terran versus Terran matchups, Protoss versus Zerg, and the like. Age of Empires, and this is going to sound like an insult against Command Conquer and StarCraft, and I don't want it to be, is definitely more of a thinking man's RTS. Even more so than the, I guess, spiritual or pseudo-sequel, Age of Mythology, which kind of dialed it back in a little bit more to the other RTSs. But, Age of Empires 2, and what's kind of helped it last, I think, so long, is how it handled unit design and diversity. Now, there are, if we look over here, a lot more factions in Age of Empires than there are in the other RTSs. I think maybe something like Empire Earth maybe has like a, as much as this. The point is, as you can see, once again, we are divided by the four ages, and you can see what units, researches, and structures are available. Now within this, each faction has specific researches and units that it can and can't build based on the history of that sieve. 
For instance, this is the Mayans, which was added in with the expansion, I believe one of the expansions that are now for the game. So this is an Arthur civilization, like what I just played with the Britons. Starts with an extra villager, but less food, resources last longer, archers are cheaper. But look at the unique tech, for instance. The Obsidian Arrows allow archers to basically destroy buildings. It gives them plus six attack. But as you can see, they don't get access to these units because they are more for the European civs. And if we come over here, once again, you can see at the castle the unique things they're going to get. The plum archers. Plumed, I'm sorry. And its unique researches. But if we come over here and go to this one right here, we'll look at the Turks. This is a gunpowder civilization. So you can see what makes it different than the other ones. So again, it's not going to have access to the plume archers because that's not their tech. But it will now have access to the gun units. So we have the hand cannoneer down here. It has different researches as well. The Janissaries, which I'm pretty sure I just butchered that name <laughs> too. And so on. But the point that I'm getting at is that in Age of Empires, each faction at its basic, basic level is the same. I'm going to be building villagers. I'm going to be building a barracks, archery range, stables, all that. What's different, however, is how those factions behave and what their actual advantages are in combat. So here's one, the Huns, they don't need houses, but they have less wood. And this is obviously a cavalry civilization. And you can see their bonuses, their unique tech, and even a team bonus. If you're playing a team game, they will provide bonuses to each other. But again, you're not going to see stuff like the Arbalest, the Hand Cannoneer. You're going to mainly see the Archers. Oh, I'm sorry, the Cavalry. But this is the point. In a, in a contemporary RTS that's built on asymmetry between two or three factions, you are pretty much routinely going to know what the enemy's going to throw at you. And that was a major part of the esports play. If I'm playing Terran versus Terran, that's going to have a different set of strategies than Terran versus Zerg or Terran versus Protoss. In this game, it's a lot more muddy due to all the different civilizations. Again, if I'm playing as Italy, we get advanced age advancement quicker, which means I can age up and get higher quality stuff before someone else can. And again, we have special archers, special infantry. And even at that level, there's still a lot more under the surface. Again, there, as you saw in the last play, there's a lot of research in this game, including upgrade armor, attack, special advantages. We got the end with the spies and the treason, which basically is used as the end game. I just want to get this game over with, get rid of the fog of war, let's just kill this guy altogether. Now, the point about that is that it just allows the game to end without the need of super units. There are no crazy, you know, walking spiders or nuclear missiles in this game. But it is all designed to be, again, all the pieces work well. The units rock, paper, scissor design can be broken based on specific units. Again, you have archers, then you have anti-archers. We can look over here. These are how these swordsmen upgrade. They're good at destroying buildings, just like the man arms up there. And like I, like you saw in the video or the last part, those attack bonuses are a very big deal. You can see the character's hit points, his attack, his armor, but then that gets a bonus in terms of attack when he's attacking a cavalry unit. But with that said, though. It's still a somewhat loose balance. If I have a hundred archers and you have three knights, they're going to kill those knights. There's nothing you can do about it. And that's designed, again, to make you have to think. But more importantly, it means you have to be.
be aware of what's going on. Now we'll switch to one more and then we'll get to my final thoughts as well as what I think about Age of Empires. But here are like a few of the... These were factions that were actually added with the new developers working on the HD version. So buildings cost less wood, they have more pierce armor, the Gipto is their infantry. And let's see, what, is, what do you do? You are... it's a quick unit with high range attack. And he's resistant to the monks. So, again, just a lot more to unpack while playing it. But, with that said, I'm going back to the main menu. I want to discuss some of my final thoughts and kind of the legacy of Age of Empires, and we'll wrap things up now. I did not think I was going to play an entire match to show off Age of Empires 2, but that's just one of the beauties of this game. And it's one of the reasons why it's I guess, wrong franchise, but stood the test of time. For real-time strategy fans watching, as I know one who will probably comment, what did you think of Age of Empires 2 in the span of things compared to the other RTSs, your Command Conquerors, Starcrafts, and even Age of Mythology? When I spoke with Sandy Pearson about the Age of Empires franchise, he was quite proud of it, and deservedly so. In terms of the main games, and I think even Age of Mythology, there was not one bad game, I think fans would argue. I'll get to the later ones in a second, though. But they all have that simple elegance to them, helped by the fact that it's grounded in real life as opposed to, again, fantasy and sci-fi. While, again, it is on the slower side compared to Command & Conquer and the other ones, it still moves at a quick pace when things get going. And, as you saw, I am definitely a boom strategy player. But, of course, we could have also tried some rush strategies with a whole lot of man-at-arms and pikemen to try and beat the enemy down from the start. And, I am sure multiplayer matches, like competitive level ones, are very interesting, to say the least. Now, in terms of Age of Empires 2 specifically, going back to a t over 20-year-old game is a little bit funky. Again, the UI, UI design has certainly evolved since this game came out, so I'm missing some of the useful quality of life features, like uh, set building rally points to control groups, a lot easier to see where villagers are, what's being re mined and gathered, stuff like that. But it still works for its time, and it's also a great example for any new designers or students watching about that framing effect of UI. If you notice, you have the main screen in the middle, you have your info pane at the bottom, and then you have your resources framed at the top. And this just basically creates three zones of focus for the player. I know if I want to look at my resources, where they are, I know what's going on at the bottom, and it just is a way of making it a lot easier for someone to process where the different information is coming from. But, with that said though, Age of Empires did have a few oddities. The third game is very infamous for the inclusion of the Home Cities system. This forced a kind of a CCG or deck building aspect into a game, into the game. I really liked it, but I can also see where it really muddled this kind of system. Because again, it's like saying, okay, we're gonna have all these factions, they're all gonna have different things. But then we're going to let players go a step further, and it could and make things a little bit more confusing. Not to mention the RPG-like leveling, that also forced players to play against people of a higher level. It's one of the things that led to the downfall of, I think that was Command Conquer Tiberium Wars, I want to say. Now after that though, the game of, after Age of Empires 3 and Halo Wars, Ensemble Studios sadly closed. And what we got next was Age of Empires Online. And this, if the game was still running and we could play it, this would certainly be a Games of Ill Repute piece. But unfortunately, after uh, Robot Entertainment, I, I believe it was either Gas Powered or Robot Entertainment worked on it first, and then it was switched over, the game just suffered. It broke a lot of the balance that was finely tuned in the Age of Empires 1 and 2 and replaced it with RPG abstraction. This was a game where uh, you had elite pikemen who could take on archers all by themselves and stuff like that. 
and it just did not work. It was just too out of the way. Now, with Age of Empires 2 HD Edition, again, it is still very much a complete game. It has a lengthy single-player campaign, people are still playing it, and there's <laughs> expansions to this game coming out now. It's kind of like a second revival that we saw with uh, Titan Quest in 2017. And we're going to get an HD edition of Age of Empires 1 soon, although I think that one may not do as well as it's using the older systems. But before this gets any longer, and just how much this game is a major part of RTS design, Age of Empires 2 may not have the flash of StarCraft and Aliens, or the presence of Tim Curry, like in Command Conquer, but it's very much like a working man or the working horse RTS. It does what it wants to do, and it does it quite well. And if you don't mind putting up with, again, RTS and UI design from 1997, I would say definitely check this out. I know my friend Thorne, who's probably watching this right now, is probably going to ask if I want to do a comp stop with him again in the near future. But that's going to do it for this week's Dissecting Design. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to check back for daily discussions on game design here and on Game Wisdom, where we examine the art and science of games, with more Dissecting Designs going up usually each Monday. If you have a game you'd like me to take a look at, please let me know in the comments. But otherwise, have a great night, and I will see you all for our next stream or recorded video. Before we get to the credits, just wanted to give a quick thank you and shout out to the supporters over on patreon.com slash gwbicer. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Check back around 10 Eastern for regular streaming. If you like to suggest games for me to cover or topics to talk about, let me know in the comments below. For a collection of my writings, as well as weekly podcasts on design, check out Game-Wisdom.com. To support the Game Wisdom Patreon, you can find us on there on Patreon.com slash GWBicer. A dollar will get you into our private Discord channel where we talk game topics and more. Five dollars will get you voting privileges for any major event, including the Saturday Night Grab Bag, Patreon-funded goals, and more. Thanks again for watching, and I hope you enjoy more videos here on the Game Wisdom YouTube channel.